Hey folks, this is Kalani, bringing you a video on how to farm yourself some shards of Zaitan. Now, you want to head into Ara Explorable mode. When you get here, you want to choose Warden Illyra and the Forgotten. Once you've done that, you want to head out into the first boss. Now, if you haven't done these before, it's relatively straightforward. You just want to head out and around to the right if you can manage it if not you can loop all the way around to the left as you can see we managed to sneak by just and so on the right but due to the mobs moving our party members actually had to go around to the left so when everybody is here we can go ahead and pull the first boss. All of this trash is skippable. You won't have to kill any trash at all. If you pull any trash, it's probably better to get out of the way either so A, it doesn't bite you in the arse later or B, um, it doesn't catch some party members out. Uh, the thing that's going to take the most time out of you in these runs is if people die. So, when all this trash is dead and we're ready to continue, I'll get back to you. So, now that all the trash is dead and everyone's here, we need one ranged person to go and trigger the Wraith Lord by proximity, and that will make the Wraith Lord's Crusher and Hunter attackable. So, have a ranged class attack one of them and then instantly run back to where the rest of you are waiting. So, there he goes, he pulls. He pulls. Nearly dies, but he pulls. And you want to tank them about here. This is so you don't get any interference with any patrols. So if you haven't done these before, the Crusher is going to be the main problem. He does a line attack, as you just saw there, and it's a, it's a huge hammer smash. And it's more of a line than it is a cone. Um, so if you're quite a bit back from him, it's probably still going to hit you. And if it hits you, it downs you. If it hits you while you're downed, you die. So it's a hit, bam, bam, dead. If his attention is focused on you, like it is on me here, you can sidestep, roll, whatever. It, it's, it's really easy to avoid, um, if I'm perfectly honest. So you shouldn't have too much trouble with that, uh, especially if you're a melee. The first thing you want to make sure, if he is focusing on you, A, you don't get hit, and B, you try not to face him to anyone else, because no guarantee they're, they're watching which way he's facing. The other mob in this fight is the Hunter, which you can see just there on the corner. He doesn't really have anything. The The main ability he has is that his abilities bounce, so if you stay a bit spread out, that's, you know, that's completely negated. Um, the other ability he has is a proximity trap on him, which will immobilise. So if you've got the focus of the Crusher, you don't want to be anywhere near the Hunter. Because if you get immobilised and he does his smash, you're going down. And if you've got... If his attention is still on you, and he smashes again, that's you dead. Um, as I say, the, the thing that's going to take longest in these runs is if someone dies. So now that Crusher's dead, we can focus on the Hunter. Now, as I say, he doesn't really have a great deal, so spread out and range him down. It's quite boring, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, he just doesn't have anything. So, I'll let you see him die, and I'll come back to you after that.
Okay, so with the hunter dead, make sure you loot both the bodies. They do have a chance to drop some some nice shiny loots. Or not so shiny, depending on your look. Remember to loot your chests, because your chest is where you're getting your shards from. It's also where the majority of your loot is coming from. So, when you've looted your chest, you want to back out the way you came. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit iffy, because I'm not entirely sure if this is... Uh, supposed to be able to be doable. Um, you know, I don't know if this is intentional, and quite potentially it's not. So, if this isn't intentional, and it's considered an exploit, and you use this to a great extent, it may warrant a ban. Um, so that is your warning. This this may not be completely legit, but it is currently the fastest way to farm Shards of Zaitan, and quite a lot of people are doing it. So if this does come with uh, a tempo perma ban, boom! It comes with a tempo perma ban. Um, there's not really much to say about that. If you if you do the deed, then you're you're gonna have to suffer the consequences. But yeah, pre pretty much you may get banned for doing this. Um, Seize the moment. Yeah. So there are two ways when you get up here. One is, as you can see, to jump up onto that ledge and then jump through the gap. This one I don't like a great deal. It seems to be very Nah. So I jump up on this tree. Now all the way to the top of this tree, onto the branch, and you want to be heading onto this little platform. Use a speed buff and straight through the gap. Just seems a lot easier to me. Um, you obviously need a speed buff, but most people can can get a hold of a speed buff. So waiting for our little friend to join us down here. There we go. So now that you've got everyone down here, you want to once again set off the Wraith Lord by proximity. He'll summon your second boss. Now, as you may have noticed, we skipped pretty much the entire dungeon to get to this second boss. That's kind of why I said it might not be overly intentional. So, first boss goes down, uh, you jump over the cliffs uh, straight into the second boss. So, if you haven't done this boss before, the AoE attack you saw just there is used on random players. You can see these runes being uh, summoned on the floor, and you just saw them explode. So, stay out of the runes. Uh, try to avoid the AoE attack. That was a fail, but never mind. Um, the other thing to note here is that the Risen Hands, uh, just around, I don't know if you can quite make them out, they'll actually start throwing rocks at you and these rocks uh, will knock you down so obviously if you get knocked down during a rune explosion or the AoE attack it can get a little iffy but the other attack that right there that you just saw if you were watching was uh, a life drain now that doesn't do an amazing amount of damage but it's obviously still doing damage and it's healing him so it's going to prolong the fight apart from that you can just range him down It's uh, it's a pretty, pretty easy fight. Stay out of the red circles, range him down. So, with that one down, go ahead and loot your chest and loot the boss. Now, that's it. Eight shards, ten minutes-ish. You've got uh, reset time with selling time and getting back in. That's it. Then you can do this as many times as you want. Obviously, the more you do it, the more chance of getting banned if it is not intentional, but mm, never mind. Thanks for watching folks, and I'll see you next time. Hey folks, this is Kalani, bringing you a location guide for crafting the first tier of fine crafting materials. Now, this should include Vial of Weak Blood, 
Bone Chip, Tiny Claw, Tiny Fang.